I say before you go, get that extra note. It's been encouraging to see most people responding positively to the content that you've been putting out. Mm. Right? Yeah, amen. <laughs> um, so, kudos to you. Hey. You've been bringing a, a new, new to us, mm -hmm. right, a sort of idea to the table. And people have been responding pretty good yeah. for the most part. Facts. Um, but it seems like some people either aren't grasping it or aren't honestly engaging it. Mm. Why do you think that is? <laughs> well, one, you know, I am excited that uh, a lot of people are hearing these new insights, which are actually old insights, like you said, new to us, um, new to me, even at one point recently, in recent years. But these are old insights. And uh, so I, I thank God for that, that we are s slowly opening our ears to the voice of church history, the way in which the Holy Spirit has taught the church throughout the ages. So I'm celebrating that. But those who are probably slower to open their ears, open their minds, open their eyes, yeah. I think it's, it's layered. It's multi-layered, mm -hmm. multifaceted. So one, I think that um, life has gotten in a way. So at one point, a lot of people had energy for this type of thing. So people were in their teens or their 20s. A lot of people were single and didn't have families or career com commitments. Uh, they didn't have, you know, theological commitments tied to their income yeah. in such a way that will conflict with them further thinking through some of these teachings. So mm -hmm. I think life got in the way. And then I think the second thing is there was also this cool factor. There was this wave of influence that just emerged out of the mist where a bunch of young, swaggy, cool Black dudes and black girls, brown, you know what I'm saying, dudes and girls came out of the hood, the inner city, uh, talking about Jesus, being bold about that, talking about theology, and we sort of transitioned from, you know, maybe the charismatic space, the prosperity space, and we start learning about this guy named John Calvin, yeah. and we put the sauce on it. We start doing music about it with beats and hooks, music videos, fashion, yeah. dance, and we just put this sort of, this wind behind that, you feel me, that sale, and it just took off. Mm -hmm. And uh, some people probably moved into the space just because it was cool, just because it was the, the wave. Mm -hmm. So over, overall, I think um, those are major components. And then lastly, I would just say, I think it's, a, it's spiritual warfare. Mm -hmm. I think the enemy is in the game of playing with words, twisting words, mm -hmm. causing people to not see what's right in front of them in a text, or question what God has said. That's what he did in the garden with Adam. He said. Did God really say? Did God really say? Mm. Right? So I think now that same thing is at play. It's now that I'm, I'm trying to introduce some of these sweet realities. Yeah. Uh, there's this fog there because the enemy is there moving mm. things around, causing you to hear something that I haven't actually said. You know, some people say, man, are we saved by baptism only or something like that? And I'm like, I never said that. We never said baptism only. He delivers grace in plenty mm. ways. That's just one example. But the point is, the spiritual warfare, the wave, it ain't no wave around studying to show yourself approved per se. It's still a biblical call, but it's not a lot of youthful swag behind it that's just sort of generating this energy for everybody to reapproach the topic afresh. And that's what I'm calling for is maybe we did move too fast from, or from charismatic prosperity, Armenian thought, and just moved into Calvinism. We didn't consider more broadly. We didn't consider... Um, other voices within church history. We just went from Armenian to Calvinist because we thought those were the only options. But now, prayerfully, what people are hearing is maybe we went too fast and didn't consider the origins of the Reformation, yeah. Luther's contribution, his cohorts, um, to this freedom and this joy that we were all looking for, but we weren't exposed to a more you know, expanded understanding of you know, what God is doing based on Paul's words, based on the scriptures in terms of justification by faith alone as delivered through means, physical means, the sacraments. Okay. So that's a long, big answer, but I think it just has something to do with, yeah, with life got in the way, people got busy, they don't have time right now to probably do a lot of deep diving. And number two, the way may not be as swaggy to be thinking deeply about these. And number three, just the spiritual warfare 
in which the devil wants to keep us uh, tied to the old Adam's energy to save ourselves, to contribute something to our faith. Whether if we believe on the front end, we justify by faith, the devil can't get us that way. Then he'll try other mechanisms like, well, maybe I can convince them that their good works earn them favor and they can get God's blessing or convince them that on the back end, you better be sinning less and less and less and reading more and more and more, praying more and more and more if you want to keep your salvation or maintain your salvation or progressively show God how serious you are. That's another one of those traps. You feel me? Yeah. 